Hello everyone, this is Harry's Movie. In this issue, let's watch an American drama, Ned Rifle. Ned's literary relative, Henry, was a wanted criminal for the heinous crime. His mother Faye was also convicted of treason and sentenced to life imprisonment for his father's instigation since Ned was still young. So he was adopted and protected by a kind priest. Ned also became a devout believer. And Ned was already 18 years old. He could live alone without an adoptive family. He knew very well that Faye had ended up like this, because of his irresponsible bastard father. Before leaving, Ned told the priest. He wanted to kill his father to comfort Faye's unfortunate life. Soon, Faye just moved from a secret prison to an outside prison to serve her sentence. Since Ned left home, he couldn't wait to visit Faye. She told Ned that she was doing well, and a big publishing company was very interested in her experience. They didn't hesitate to pay millions of dollars to send a graduate student to prison every week to collect her story and published an autobiography for her. The money was also deposited into Ned's account. Ned can get a bank card from Simon at any time. Soon the visit time was over. Ned had to say goodbye to Faye. She wanted her son to visit her often. But Ned couldn't wait to find his father to seek revenge. He relieved Faye that he had to leave some time to deal with things. During this period, he would contact Faye on the date set by the prison. Then, Ned found his uncle Simon and got the bank card. Both Simon and his father were famous poets. What his father did back then left Simon in the shadows and unable to get out. Since then, he was unable to recover. And he lived alone in a hotel. However, a girl was very obsessed with Simon's poems. The girl was Susan, a research student who had yet to graduate. Her graduation thesis was to interpret the poems of Simon. Susan had been wandering around the hotel for weeks before Ned came. Susan saw that Ned could easily meet the famous poet. She approached Ned on purpose and talked about her love for Simon. But it was getting late and Susan was also ill. Ned opened a room for Susan to rest first. He found Simon and conveyed Susan's appreciation of his poems. Later, Ned learned from Simon that his father might work in a bookstore in Seattle. The next day, Simon met Susan. Ned took a taxi to the airport. Susan had a deep understanding of Simon's poems, especially the poem was written to Ned's father, Henry, was the one Susan really liked. During the conversation, when Susan knew that Ned was Henry's son, she suddenly got up to say goodbye and ran downstairs in a panic. Susan learned from the receptionist that Ned might go to the airport. So she chased him to the airport immediately. She suddenly confessed to Ned, she must follow him to Seattle. At this moment, Simon suddenly remembered the name Susan was the same as the name of a girl Henry violated years ago. And Henry also spent seven years in jail for this. He called the jail and verified with Faye, it turned out that Susan was the graduate student sent by the publishing house to compile Faye's autobiography. Simon felt that Susan was coming with ill intent. He immediately went to the publishing house and asked about Susan's condition. And the publishing house naturally knew everything about his visit. The publisher said that Susan had strong writing skills. She had some popularity in the industry. But no matter what kind of work she created, they were all involved in the discussion of Simon's poems. This was why people associated her with the notorious Henry family. So when the publisher wanted to publish the autobiography of Faye, they naturally found Susan to ghostwrite later the publishing house discovered that Susan had been in a mental hospital and had been receiving psychotherapy for many years. And she also stabbed her mentor who prevented her from graduating. Strangely, Susan never came to the publishing house. But she would write the weekly interviews with Faye and send it to the publishing house by mail. Simon, who learned the truth, hurried back to the hotel. But he was told by the receptionist that Susan and Ned were gone. This time, the priest found Simon under the introduction of Faye and explained Ned's plan to kill his father. At the same time, Ned and Susan had come to the library in Seattle. Unexpectedly, the library expelled Henry early because of his bad behavior. But Henry had a colleague who would know where Henry was. Through Henry's friend, Ned knew that Henry went to a remote drug factory as a volunteer. Then Ned bought a car and found the pharmaceutical factory. Then he knew Henry often had hallucinations due to the side effects of the medicine. He was currently taking a rest at the pharmaceutical factory. At this moment, Susan came uninvited and claimed to help Ned. The two followed the manager of the pharmaceutical factory to the park and saw Henry from a distance. This was also the first time that Ned has seen his father in years. After calming down for a while, Ned proposed to visit Henry early the next morning. The next morning, Susan looked through Ned's luggage and found a pistol. Susan realized that Ned might be killing his father. She took out the luggage and watched Ned leave. Ned found his father in the library of the pharmaceutical factory, but found out that Henry was not crazy at all. Pretending to be crazy and stupid was entirely for the purpose of living in this place where food and accommodation were provided for free. When Henry learned that Ned was the son he hadn't seen in years, the first reaction was that Ned should be here to kill himself. But Ned was calm, he knew that the success rate of revenge was particularly small when the opponent was prepared. Besides, his heart was also very tangled. Ned calmly told his father Faye wanted him to help her publish an autobiography. And he deliberately flattered Henry's writing style to far exceed Simon. Henry didn't boast at all, he was delighted. 
he immediately took out his work for his son to appreciate. This was what Ned expected. Since Henry was a wanted criminal, Ned said they could drive across the border. Moreover, Henry, a womanizer, was very interested in Susan who was with Ned. So he readily agreed to this job. On the way to pick up Susan, Ned found a chance to assassinate Henry. He took advantage of Henry not to drive, and hurriedly got the gun and prepared to shoot. Unexpectedly, there was no bullet in the gun. Ned missed the opportunity to shoot, he was furious. When he arrived at the hotel, he asked Susan to hand over the bullet. But Susan pretended to be ignorant, leaving Ned helpless. Ned thought Susan wanted money angrily, he dropped the wallet and slammed the door. Susan found the bank card in the wallet. There was also a password note written by Simon. When Ned came back, he found that Susan and Henry were gone. His bank card and pistol were also taken away. At this moment, Simon called Ned knew Susan's true identity. He felt bad. He contacted the bank immediately and found out the last use location of the bank card. At the same time, Henry also discovered Susan's true identity. Susan's words and behavior suddenly reminded him this girl was a rebellious girl many years ago. The bloody thing was that Susan actually fell in love with Henry back then. She missed the days when she was cheated by Henry. It was also because of Henry's poetry status that Susan had today's accomplishments. So people in the family thought that Susan's falling in love with Henry must be a mental problem. Henry regretted what he did back then. He persuaded Susan to let go of that unbearable past. But Susan had regarded Henry as her life and it was hard to give up. Henry didn't want to ruin the girl's life. So he left secretly the next morning. As soon as Henry left, Ned found the hotel they went to yesterday. Susan was awakened by the knock on the door and found that Henry was not by her side. She got her gun and saw Ned through the window. Susan was a little frightened, and she sat in the same place at a loss and gradually fell asleep. Soon after, Henry changed his mind and returned. He inserted the key into the lock and heard Ned calling himself. Henry looked panicked and hurriedly pushed in. Susan in light sleep could be frightened by Ned's voice. She tried to shoot at the door and hit Henry who just entered the door. Henry knew that this infatuated woman would commit suicide because of self-blame. He held his last breath and walked out the door and said to his son, save her. Ned ran in the door and saw Susan was really ready to shoot herself. But there was only one bullet in the gun and it has been given to Henry. At this time, the two looked at the knife on the table at the same time. To prevent the tragedy from happening, Ned rushed over to grab the knife but accidentally stepped on the ice cube that fell on the ground and fell against the wall. Susan rushed forward and rushed towards the knife and pierced her abdomen. Then she walked by the door and fell beside Henry. At this time, the nearby police had rushed to stand by at the door. Henry, who hadn't died, asked his son to run away. But Ned didn't talk anything and silently raised his hand to surrender. This was where a story of revenge had ended. I have to say that the heart of a crazy girl is really hard to understand. Okay, this is the end of this issue. Friends who like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time.